This video concerns one of the basic and essential skills for all beginning freedivers. Breathing is your essential tool. You may not be a freediver, but to the extent that you are interested in improving your breathing, I believe that you can benefit a lot from freedivers. And the reason being is because these people know what they are talking about. They have to because they are putting their life at risk. The problem with a lot of information about breathing is that uh, it is uh, based on thin air. Anyone can make any claim if uh, what they do is sit in the middle of the room and uh, breathe in and out. But uh, what if these practices are ultimately going to potentially cause someone to lose his life? Then safety has to become a high priority and obviously there is an outcome that can be very easily quantifiable as of how long can someone stay in the water or how deep can they go. So I think we can all learn from free divers. The objective of your breathing is not to add more air. Sitting here, I'm probably about 98% saturated in oxygen. Can I up this much more? No. Compare what he just said with the common claims of take bigger breaths in and fill your lungs and your entire body with air. It's about putting the brain, which is the biggest consumer of oxygen, into the most favorable state before you go down. Sleep research has taught us an awful lot about this. There are three or four basic stages of sleep. Each type of sleep is characterized by a different kind of breathing. We know that we want to be in the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is our automatic pilot, it's our best friend. Very important message here from Aaron, where he says that in order to be efficient at breathing, we need to be calm. He refers to it as uh, being in a subconscious state. A calm mind not only will be consuming less oxygen, but also as it is part of the HPA axis, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, our entire body and nervous system will be calm. So also other muscles and organs will be consuming less oxygen. For those familiar with uh, respiratory biochemistry, this means uh, that uh, the production of carbon dioxide will be lower and as a result uh, we can breathe softer, we can take longer to complete uh, its breathing cycle. And finally, for the last and most entertaining clip of the video. The breathing, as in nature, all things are rhythmic. It must be rhythmic. All this nonsense about breathe in for half as long as you breathe out. If the breath does not go into that naturally by itself, do not force it into any unnatural patterns or any preconceived ideas of that. Oh, I must breathe in for five seconds, hold for a second. Why? Uh -oh, to, to, uh, upload more oxygen. And then I breathe out for 20 seconds, pause for two seconds. Why? So I can breathe out more CO2. All wrong. This is all absolute nonsense. The breathing should be rhythmic. This is what the mind responds to, and this is the guy that we're trying to talk to. Rhythm is by far the most overlooked quality of breath. Anyone that has studied with me yoga has heard many times asking them to establish a rhythm, which might be different from one individual to the other. I want to take a quick break here and show you this graph from a study where they observed the amplitude, the volume, the breathing pattern of uh, individuals under different emotional states and uh, you clearly see how the more favorable emotional states have a rhythm while the more unfavorable ones will be more erratic. I hope that gives you a clue in terms of how important having rhythm in your breath is. How about working with the ratio of inhalation to exhalation or having breath holds? Are this nonsense? First of all, I will agree with Aaron that uh, neither of these uh, are the end goal and uh, useful or beneficial for everyone, as some people will have different respiratory capacity and maybe not even be able to get much out of these practices. However, 
breath holds, I think, can be fantastic in terms of helping people establish a rhythm in their breath. I often suggest when someone's breath is taxed to perform a couple of breath holds up to 70% of maximum capacity and this will help him re-establish a breathing pattern, a breathing rhythm. Again, that's pretty much the goal. As for working with the ratio of inhalation to exhalation, there is sufficient clinical evidence as well as scientific research to justify that this can be useful. On the other hand, my favorite way of calming the nervous system down is the Ananda breath, where the volume is very, very low. And if you want to practice that, you can find a link in the description. I suggest you check the entire video from Aaron as it has other useful information.